Welcome back to Damascus, Syria. We are live. It is evening here, daytime in New York City. One of the things that we have discovered since we got on the ground here at the end of last week was that there are many Syrian Americans that were living over in America. They decided that the opportunities for them, for businesses, for investments were to be found here in their home country and they moved home. We have also met plenty of European and American folks that have moved over to Syria. They believe that there is going to be opportunity here. Just to give you a little color, a little flavor about Syria and about Damascus, this is my first time to ever be uh, here, of course, in Syria. And it is very modern and then it can be very old at the same time. You have a lot of family money, a lot of family run businesses, but then you have young women and men walking around on their blackberries and their cell phones, drinking wine at the cafes. Uh, they want televisions. They want, they want iPhones. In particular, iPhones are very popular here, I have to say. Even though they uh, legally cannot obtain them, they have them. Uh, that's an interesting story. They also have told us uh, that they now with cable news, cable television news, and with all of the things that they see on television and on the Internet, on YouTube, they want those things here in Syria. Now, one interesting gentleman that we met here, Peter Walkie, he is uh, the founding director of Syria Rising. He is uh, an American. He has worked abroad uh, for many years. He and his wife, four years ago, decided to come to Syria to permanently relocate to the Middle East and explore financial opportunities. Here's why he decided to do it. One of the things that we're going to do in our investments is go into companies that themselves look for good corporate governance, that are going to keep their accounts properly, that are going to get their accounts audited at the end of the year, and uh, many of the leading audit firms are already represented here in Damascus. But a lot of these, these companies that you're looking at are family owned. That is a big theme mm. that we found here in Syria and there seems to be a little bit of a trust issue uh, between uh, the government and these companies as well. The, the, the family owned companies want to stay separate from the government but you've got to have government regulation involved to get them onto the exchange here. How do you address that? Well I think that that also is a matter of change and uh, uh, to change the culture of a company that has been responsible only to itself and its own owners to one that learns to become responsible to third parties such as minority investors and to be able to list on the stock exchange takes a certain leap of faith and the company and its owners have to believe that that is in their own best interest. You and your wife uh, chose four years ago to move here from New York uh, to take permanent residence up in the Middle East. Big risk for you obviously and your family. What do you see here that is so attractive that you're willing to make this kind of bet? Even though um, I'm in my mid-70s, I'm a person who thinks very much about the future. And I think that the future in this country is tremendous. Um, it's a country that knows what it is. The Syrian people know who they are. We're going to get to the types of companies in a moment, but I have to ask you about the amount of money you're looking to raise, uh, about $100 million. We're raising $100 million. And you're looking to raise, okay, and you're hoping to do that by June of this year. By the so end got, of June. How yeah. confident are you that you can get enough foreign capital in here? And how much of that is going to be American capital? Uh, part of it will be American capital. Uh, we have some Americans, including myself and my partners, uh, who are going to invest. And we have some outside investors too. Um, but I think most of it will be uh, capital from the Middle East, from countries that are very interested in doing business in Syria and need to find a way into the country, and also some from Europe. We've seen a lot of reports uh, that many of the large investment banks, the big name banks in New York, are coming to this country. They were here in the fall meeting with the president, uh, meeting with uh, Prime Minister Dardari because they are interested in opening up, doing deals here in the U.S. You were here during that time. Talk to me about it. I think that uh, uh, we've already been talking to some of the big international investment banks. They're very keenly interested 
But the deals need some massaging and preparation to be done. Because I think the kinds of companies we invest in, in two or three years, will make fantastic deals mm -hmm. for these international investment banks. They'll be perfect merger and acquisition candidates. What do you think the hottest is industries are going to be? The kinds of businesses we're looking at, one is agribusiness, uh, where Syria is already a leader, but there's so little value added mm -hmm. often to excellent quality products. Mm -hmm. So food processing is a tremendous opportunity area. What about food, though? I mean, uh, okay, I love the olives here, I have to tell you. And this is one of the, they're the biggest exporters of olives, but they're exporting them in paper bags. I mean, they, there's no mm -hmm. cans of olives that they can sell around this world. Can they make that happen? Can they yes, make that? Yes. They can do that. Either. And I think there again, people like us can help because we can introduce our companies to new markets, new partners around the world, and especially the critical thing of presentation and branding. And unless you have presentation and branding, you're not really going to become a global competitor. Right.